Hey, 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 everyone. I hope everyone is good. Hope everyone is great. I hope you're in a good headspace and I hope that this week gave you what you were looking for. I hope this week was good vibes. I hope that you had connections with good people. I hope that you learned a lesson or two in living. And if you are chilling by yourself and your ears are open, and receptive to hearing. I hope that this is a word for you and get that good old season dialogue. And if you are driving in your car, be safe always. Um, but again, I hope your ears are receptive because I want to feed you a little bit of something for the soul. So I'm always um, scrolling and looking at relatable quotes for life. I like to at least screenshot them or write them down. And because they're always a tool for going into words for the podcast. And I saw this quote and I was like, whoa, that's so relatable. And that's a great topic to start off on. And it says, don't concern yourself with what others think of you. It is a waste of time. So in a class that I took, a psychology class, I cannot remember. I think it was cognitive psychology. Um, anyway, there's this term called the spotlight effect. And um, this effect happens to all of us. And I'm, so I'm going to read the term to you. The spotlight effect is a term used by social psychologists to refer to the tendency we have to overestimate how much other people notice about us. All of the things that you have been afraid of, and we talk about this a lot, um, stepping out of certain spaces in order to show up for yourself people ain't watching you I mean they are but they really aren't and at the end of the day who cares it does feel a little uncomfortable when you want to move a little different and it may appear a little funny or pretentious or I don't know in your face to certain people but what I've learned also is that when we are serving ourselves first under the guidance of God we are doing what it is that we are called to do. I never forget, um, I had a woman to prophesize over me. And um, y'all, I'm real funny about people like in my space and saying certain things. But when I met her, I knew that she was definitely a woman of God. And it was not a situation where I was in church or um, that type of atmosphere would open up to her prophesizing, but it was actually um, a photo shoot. So I am a photographer and I have a lot of energies that come in and out of my studio. And um, this particular woman, she, I don't know if you've ever felt a connectiveness to a person only through eyes. And so she introduced herself and we locked eyes immediately. And there was something about the sincerity of her features and her face and her eyes. They say eyes are the windows to the soul. And I felt a calming. I felt a resurgence. I knew that she was um, a minister. But I didn't know specifically that she prophesizes over people. So, you know, I'm going into the shoot, doing what I do. I like to have fun. I like to be personable with people. We're laughing, we're talking, and I do like to engage with people just to hear maybe their backstory or a little history about themselves. And so she told me a tad bit and she said, I want to, I want to give you a word. I want to tell you something. And so immediately after she, when she said that y'all, the anxiety went up, it did, but it was also like this moment of calmness because I felt like she was going to tell me something that I needed to hear. Now she pulled me to the side. She touched my hand. She held my hand and she looked me dead in my eyes. And, um, I don't know, you know, if your elders or your parents have taught you this, but when you speak to someone and you want to, um, have emphasis on the word, you look at a person eye to eye. And so this woman looked at me eye to eye. She held my hand and she said, your calling is not in what you're doing right now. It is beyond what you even imagine. But I see you standing at the cliff and you don't know whether you should just fall or go back. And she said, what do you think that God is calling you to do? And so I kind of stared at her because I was like, if I fall, I'm going to die. But I knew what she was saying and I knew what she was going um, for. 
because about a week prior to that, I had a dream about speaking to women. One of the visuals and the visions that I see often, that's why I say God really, um, he brings things to us the way in which we understand and know how. So anyway, it was confirmation for me, right? And I had been fighting this feeling for years because I was like, Lord, I'm not in this space to receive any of these things. And um, I don't want to be an example for anything like use me, but don't use me right now. So when she spoke to me in that moment and she said, I feel like you're standing at a cliff and you are trying to decide whether to go back or to to fall. I knew that the concept of what she was imagining and saying to me was that I needed to fall and I needed to fall into another element in another space in my life that was going to be beneficial for me. And I say all of that to say that sometimes moving on our gifts and things that God has been calling us to looks a little funny and it causes us to show up a little different. And for other people, it looks um, it, it, it makes them feel uncomfortable. And when you are moving um, in your space and moving um, according to the time that God say, go, go ahead and move. Go ahead and sit in that space because the space in which you are honoring is the honoring of God and it will push you through so many opportunities and it is so much like the spotlight effect, you know, thinking that people are noticing the overestimation of people noticing us and maybe um, saying things we feel in our mind. Oh, you know, I can't do this because they're going to say I'm doing too much or I can't show up this way because they're going to say I'm acting different. Well, let them be. One thing I learned about words is now words do hurt. They do. But words don't penetrate unless there is some truth to it. So if you always take in what someone is telling you, then that means that you are valuing what you feel is truth within yourself. And honestly, the only people that we have to um, make happy and, and benefit in some way is ourselves and God. So sit with that for a minute. So if there is something that you are wanting to do or something that God has been showing you and it feel a little funny and you are feeling as if people are going to notice you in a way that's going to make you uncomfortable well you're not ready to move yet because I'll tell you something about moving from one aspect to another when it was time for myself and then other individuals that I have spoken to who have bridged into um, a different level of life they felt complacent and comfortable where they were. When you show up for yourself, do it scared, do it boldly, do it with the intention of fulfilling everything it is that you were supposed to fulfill in your personal journey. I look at all of the successful people, um, ones who took the chance and moved towards uh, places that were beneficial for them. They had to leave some things behind. They had to leave a life. They had to leave um, familiar faces. They had to leave familiar places. And they really had to align themselves with the notion that they were going to succeed. And I know for many people, um, success feels like an unfamiliar territory because for some success is the pivotal of where they want to go and they are doing everything they want to do to attain it. But see these steps going into what looks like success is scary anyway, because you'll have a lot of pitfalls and there's a lot of changes. And then there are people when it comes to success who get afraid when success comes their way, not because they don't think that they can handle it, but because they think that they can lose it. And so if you are not in the space to accept that there will be some changes and and there will be some moments where it looks crazy and funny to other people, 
then you are not ready to take on that new light. Sometimes showing up as your most radical and beautiful self will also be off-putting to you because the mind will make you feel as if you are moving at a pace and doing things that were not like your old self. So you begin to wonder if this is even the space in which you are supposed to operate. So again, you can be your own enemy. Now, the quote says, don't concern yourself with what others think of you. It's a waste of time. But what do you think about yourself? If there is a gift, if there is a talent that God has given you and you are putting it on the backside, impeding the way that it will show up in your life and will bring you closer to whatever it is that you have imagined and prayed for, then you are stopping yourself from the ability to be great. I want to encourage you to keep going, even if it looks silly, even if people don't agree, even if others question why it is that you move in the direction that you move. When something is placed on your heart, it is given to you by way of visions or you get that feeling. I don't know if, you know, again, God is different for everyone and he gets your attention by doing different things. For me, it it was always visions. So if you are getting a tap, um, a small little gesture, and you know that that is from God, I want you to sit in the space and I want you to accept that. Even if it feels uncomfortable, even if whatever that radical decision that you have to make that is going to move you into the next level looks crazy. Even if you are going to lose some people in your life who don't understand The spotlight effect is a term used by social psychologists to refer to the tendency we have to overestimate how much other people notice us. And the key word is overestimate. Get out of your head. Do you go in, make things work and move on your own personal journey It is amazing that social media really um, shows the talents and um, the creativity of so many people, whether it is through comedy, which alleviates grief for those who are going through or just need a laugh, you know, who who likes comedy, the creativity um, and the, the, the gift of making like I love decor so I'm looking at women and men who put things together from scratch and the visuals are beautiful some people sit on their talent and don't actually think it is a talent but it is because it is the beauty of the mind the eyes and the hands being put together to create something so very unique which in turn inspires a whole bunch of people who love things like that the art of singing being able to even voice melodies as beautiful as angels that is a gift don't hide behind what you have even if it does look silly to others and others don't understand exercise that gift The gift of talking, the gift of speaking, the gift of poetry, the gift of writing. All of those things are innate to to you. Use it. You don't know how that will catapult you even in a job. Not so much personable to use for your own, but a job, a career. You don't know what jobs and opportunities it would open up for you and increase in your own life. I want you to take a moment and just think about what you want and stop sitting on the fact that you are afraid of how you would show up and how it would look to others, but be more concerned with how you moving into a place will actually help you move you and just make you whole. I'm so happy that you're here. I am so happy that you listened in. I am proud of where 
we have gone. And I say we because y'all are family. I am, um, look, I didn't even know um, how to look at the reviews and the ratings um, on the Apple podcast, but I, I got a glimpse of it and I'm so appreciative to the ones who did take the time to give honest reviews. Um, again, this is the beginning. I'm stepping into something new, so I don't have it down packed, but I'm getting there. I enjoy, um, I enjoy speaking. And I think that for me, that is my gift that I have shied away from. So I'm utilizing and using that in 2023 as it showed up to me um, all of my life, but more importantly, the latter part of 2022. Thank you so much. If you are a TikToker, (laughs) you can follow me on TikTok. I have all of my social media handles um, in the description. I'm also on Facebook, so add me on Facebook. Um, I'm trying to get more into social media, y'all. It's a lot. It's a lot. I want to be intentional about being on social media, though. Um, I am a very private person, but I do feel that the gift of what God um, has restored and showed me in my life will be beneficial not only for others, but I know for myself. So I'm so glad you came. I hope that it was some food for the soul. I hope it was some good seasoning food for the soul. And I can't wait to meet you back at the same place next week. And remember, on Mondays, we have the beautiful reminders. It is intentional, beautiful words to move you throughout the week. Monday is a great day to start just hearing something positive. So with all of that, I leave you. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye.